Welcome to episode six of the Creating Responsible Companies podcast. My name is Janet Craig, and I'm one of the co-founders of Destination Better. And I'm Barbara Anderson, the other co-founder of Destination Better. And on today's episode, we are going to talk about corporate communications and why corporate social responsibility, or CSR, is foundational to your content strategy and how to include it with six components for success. This is the first part of a three-part series that we are doing on communicating CSR. And today we are gonna talk about internal communications. In episode seven, we're gonna talk about externally communicating CSR. And in episode eight, we'll take a look at communicating CSR to investors and company owners. So be sure to catch those additional episodes. As always, you can find show notes at destinationbetter.com slash six. We'll have a free resource for you because that's what we always promise. That's right, right? valuable. So you can just sit back and listen now or watch if you're on YouTube um, because we've taken the notes for you. That's right. So we hope, Janet, that this is not only valuable for corporate social responsibility professionals, but also for corporate communications professionals. And I think that um, corporate social responsibility embedded into their content strategy is just a, a huge opportunity if it's not already. And if it is already, then we're going to provide some tips for how to really think about it even differently. And, and in our work too, we've come across when we've worked in other companies um, working on CSR strategies and there's always somebody in communications who's just waiting for you to say, hey, um, do you want to help us tell our story? <laughs> That's right. They're just dying to tell the story. Nobody's ever asked them sometimes. And so we've come across some really amazing champions in the communications departments that we've uh, that, with the companies that we've worked in. And so we are super passionate about this, especially Barbara, because you spent a lot of time in this space. That's right. And I actually was even told that I communicated too much, if that is such a thing. <laughs> but it's such a great story often. And um, it just has so many benefits, which I won't go into now because we're going to talk about that in a bit. But what might be helpful, Janet, is for us to start with a definition of corporate social responsibility, just to give a sense for what type of topics will be included in a content strategy. So our definition is how a company manages the impact it has on the environment as well as the people inside and outside of the company. So when you think about who those people are, their employees, the communities, customers, suppliers, owners, and the third component is how the company governs these areas. So this includes reporting on economic performance because this is about making more money in addition to being responsible. So those three components are environment, social, which is the people in and outside of the company, and then governance or economics um, as the third component. So we'll talk a little bit here real quickly about what topics would be included in each of those. And first would be environment. So typically a company would report internally and externally on energy, waste, water, and effluence. And those are those nasty things that a company might produce that would go downstream or, or pollute. So those are effluents. So what about on the economic or governance side, Janet? So on the economic or governance side of things, we look at the financial performance. So how does the company make money? One of the things that we also take a look at is purchasing policies. So does your company include social and environmental factors in its purchasing policy? Do you make sure that there is not child labor in your supply chain or trafficked mm -hmm. humans? And also the ethics policies that prevent corruption. Sometimes companies have um, codes of ethics and mm -hmm. business standards that they produce. And, um, and just making sure really that companies are competing fairly. So we've talked about environment topics, economic or governance topics, and the last is social. And again, this is how companies treat people inside and outside of their company. So these topics include everything from customer health and safety, employee health and safety, product ingredient transparency, labor practices, employment policies, labor relations, as well as safety, of employees, training, diversity, and discrimination. And of course, we hate to even talk about some of these topics, but companies do need to report that they are not doing these, is preventing child labor or human trafficking in the supply chain. And how, most importantly, I think, not maybe most importantly, but one of near and dear to my heart, is how a company supports the communities in which it operates. 
That's right. There's lots of great opportunities for that, and we'll get to it in just a few minutes. So hold on to your hats, people. Okay. <laughs> so the first thing that we need to do is we've, we've taken a look at what CSR is. We've taken a look at some of the topics that you could be discussing inside your company. And these are topics that are important to people that, that work there. Um, but who are your internal stakeholders? There's lots of different groups, and sometimes we have to talk to them um, differently. So um, internal stakeholders are employees and subsets. So we have leadership, so mm -hmm. executive leadership, and sometimes boards of directors, those are important. Um, you could be looking at speaking to different company divisions. Sometimes people call them business units. Geographic audience, if you're a global company, you may be speaking geographically to, um, you know, uh, like APAC or Latin yeah. America, mm -hmm. Europe, those types of geographic audiences. And then um, contractors or contracted staff or third party vendors, they do walk through the halls of your company. That's right, as do visitors. As right? do visitors, that's right. And so we want to be sure that you are aware of those stakeholders and that you have opportunities to um, to talk to them. That's right. So we talked um, earlier as we presented this as the six components. And so that's the first component is the audience. Um, the second component is what to communicate. And there's so many opportunities here. From an internal perspective, you really wanna tell your internal, mostly employees, about your corporate social responsibility strategy, your goals as it relates to your strategy, the progress, any kind of events that you have, maybe fundraising events or signing of documents or um, big milestone. A, a great way to and do this is through images. We know pictures say a thousand words certainly talk about your successes as well as challenges and i think we always think about how to tell that good story and and but we know it life is not always easy and so you have to talk about challenges which often opens the door for employees to say hey i could help with that um, so as you're as you are thinking about what to communicate internally Things also include like educate your company about what your strategy is focused on. We've talked about this in other episodes about making it relevant to your business, why the company is focused on these specific priorities, progress updates, small wins. Uh, one thing, no matter if you put the most brilliant um, piece together about your strategy, what's gonna get the most hits is your human interest stories. <laughs> <laughs> about what an employee did maybe at a pet shelter or something like that. So human interest stories are great. And I always position it in the terms of with them, right? What's in it for them um, and how it can benefit your uh, internal employees or your contractors or, or the executives. And lastly, be clear about asking for assistance. And as you share what your strategy is, what your goals are, always connect the dots and try to think about how employees can help with that strategy where they can play a role open the door for them be clear and so um, that's the second component of what to communicate all right so now we're going to go on to why you would communicate and whenever we think about why we would communicate we always have really good reasons right <laughs> but that's sometimes right. i think it's important to really um understand what those whys are so if someone asks you the question well why should we be doing this we're going to give you the answers so hopefully you'll, you'll be able to get past those um objections that anybody gives you the first one is huge and major it's just to establish credibility mm -hmm. and to outline the value of your um, CSR program and how you are, if you don't have a formal program, how you are um, just managing the environmental and the social aspects and that governance piece, like how you're running your company, um, how just basically how you're doing it. Right. Um, and so to establish credibility, number one, also, uh, of course, outlining the value and then reporting progress. People mm. love to see That's right. that you said you were going to do something. Well, tell us how you're doing if you haven't done as well as you thought you would tell the story that's right people just love to know that you're doing something it's really good for fostering relationships um either in your community up and down your supply chain even with potential employees right that's so attracting right. talent and then um also 
to create CSR ambassadors inside your company. So you have a, a lot of people that didn't know that you were doing the great things. What do we like to say? Companies are doing great things. They just aren't telling their stories. That's right. And so when you start communicating it, you should be prepared for creating an army of CSR ambassadors inside your company because they will they will show up. Right. And we know that there's especially generations who only will work with companies who align with their values and so you have to tell that story even if you think nobody's listening yeah they're listening we promise <laughs> they are you know it's kind of like being a parent right you yeah. think your kids aren't listening and then they get older and they're like oh you were listening <laughs> i didn't know <laughs> so okay so the, of the six components we've covered number one was audience number two what to communicate number three why communicate and then this is one of my favorites this is number four ways to communicate oh and they are so many and to, this is where you can think about being really creative so first of all think if you have if your company has an intranet if you're large enough where you have a system that's um, got a firewall around it and you can uh, communicate there that's certainly one place to communicate the good old email is one it's an easy one but don't lose sight of handwritten notes especially i think if you've got team members who have done something um, on the team, write a little note. It, it goes a, lo a long way. There's the good old fashioned posters. If you've got televisions and throughout maybe a, a building that you could uh, put rotating um, PowerPoint slides or images of programs. And the people that are visiting your company and your suppliers that are walking mm. around your halls love to see that And stuff. we do. We love when we go to clients' offices. We stand at the elevators and, and look at those. So, so we're always proud to see that. Um, then if your company has a broadcast system, so maybe you've got like an um, audio system that um, you can broadcast messages across. That's a great way to do it, especially for milestones or reaching events. Uh, if you've got sidewalks, who ever thought that sidewalks could be a communication channel? But when we used to have fundraising events, we would outline things on the sidewalks Sidewalk as employees. Chalk? Yeah, That's as so much as, fun. as employees would walk in, and it's something they never saw, and so it was super easy. You could rinse it off at the end of the day. Uh, the cost was like dollar store chalk, right? So sidewalks are fun. Staff meetings are really important. So this is where you um, leaders can be informed. So it, we know that departments have staff meetings. We know that leaders do. So is there an opportunity to provide to them a slide, uh, maybe on a quarterly basis or a monthly basis with an update? And we know that employees like to hear from their immediately from their managers. So that's a huge opportunity. It also reinforces that manager's commitment to CSR and their knowledge of it because they want to make sure they understand before they present it. You've got in-person events or town halls, especially if you have leadership or like maybe a division has a meeting. If your company has kiosks, so maybe if you're like a, a large warehouse or distribution center, or if you have some maybe like call center where you you're, not every employee has a computer or a login, they can use the kiosk. Mm -hmm. What do I call them? Computers on a stand? Computers on a stand, yeah. <laughs> because there are a lot of large companies that, that we've worked with before mm -hmm. that have um, staff that does not have access to that intranet. So mm -hmm. um, so we've got to figure out better ways to reach them. Yep, that's a one way. There's printed pieces that you can uh, send out, specialty items. just And so those are sometimes called tchotchkes, right? Or printed items that can have messages on them. So um, things that I don't know, like little balls, I'm trying to think, or... Um, uh, I'm looking around clips, our office trying to grab something. Water bottles. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, just try kind of to things. make them Coffee sustainable. Mm -hmm. If you've got a system where you still have a um, actual physical paycheck, you could do paycheck stubs, um, like inside the insert, like an insert into the paycheck or on the pay stub itself, right? You could print messages. And sometimes there are messages, um, you have message space available on the electronic pay stubs where you could just slug in some yeah. copy on them too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, um, online internal tools. So like your HR system, maybe your human resources or payroll. If you have giving systems where they log in, there may be a message and it can be really targeted to whatever that initiative is. There, you may have an employee newsletter, have a standing space in that. And um, the standard summary PowerPoint slide, which we've talked about, could be used um, internally for leaders or even externally, which um, we'll talk about in the next episode about 
external communication. And then you've got campaigns that could go across platforms and the almighty now in the year 2020 is video, right? So try to create those videos, especially behind the scenes, get leadership um, on the videos, endorsing the programs, telling the story. And um, so huge opportunities there, and that's the fourth part of ways to communicate. One, um, one little idea that um, one of our clients had, they operate um, call centers, and those call center employees did not have access to the internet. However, IT could push out little windows and little oh, inspirational yeah. messages on mm -hmm. their computers. And so that's another good way that they can just have a good little pop-up that, yep. that comes in as a reminder. Mm -hmm. um, fifth component. That's right. Words of caution. I am probably one of the most risk averse people you will ever meet. <laughs> Calculated anyway. Cal cal <laughs> Calculated risk. If I could, num if I could put a number on it, That's it's right. awesome. Um, but this is something you and I both agree on, and um, that is to assume that anything you communicate internally may end up outside your company. Mm -hmm. So don't um, just make sure that whatever you're you're comfortable with talking about internally, if an external stakeholder or someone saw that same message, um, that's your litmus test right there. Would it be okay if this got outside our company and someone spread the news somewhere? That's right. All right. And um, the other thing is don't look like the yearbook editor. This is one of Barbara's- Word of caution. Word of caution. <laughs> um, that is don't be in every one of your photographs that you take when you're in events. Make sure that you are um, recognizing that other people are there, that, that they are supporting what you're doing if you're leading um, CSR or leading this um, for your company. Um, and that's part of um, one of those great 24 um, you know, soft skills That's right. that we talk about in one of our other episodes. Episode four, I think. Episode four mm -hmm. um, is that uh, make sure you're nodding, giving the nod to some other people too, so that it doesn't look like it's, um, that it's all about you. That's because right. Because it's all about everybody. So as we round out this episode here, and we hope that people go to the download to to look at this information, when we said there's six components, so I'm going to review them real quick. The audience is number one. And then second is what to communicate. Third, why communicate. Fourth, ways to communicate. Fifth is words of caution. And because we are glass half full kind of gals, we aren't gonna end on words of caution. We're gonna end on a positive note of areas of opportunity is number six. So this is something that I feel very passionate about. When you think about stakeholders in a company, you think about communities, uh, suppliers, vendors, um, governments, I feel very near and dear to my heart is that of all those stakeholders, I always considered employees as 50% importance of all of those combined. So this, this internal communications is so key to the success of a program. And as we've said before, no CSR professional can do this alone. And so we need leadership support. We need support of our colleagues. We need their innovation of creative ideas. So in terms of areas of opportunity, this sixth component is to focus 50% of your effort of communication on internal stakeholders. In addition to that, be present and like, be that like constant voice, um, but not overwhelming, not too much in, um, in the limelight or too much like out of balance with what the business operations are. Um, and uh, this, as Janet had indicated earlier, goes a long way in terms of fostering internal relationships and it helps build connections with employees. So I think as, um, as we know, as leaders of companies now, where employees used to go with a company, maybe like our parents, and they would stay there for 30 years, and that was the mission, right? And now if you're there three years, that's a good thing. So try while those employees are there for those philosophical three years to really have them connected to the company, have them be the best that they're gonna be, invest in them. And so this is a way by in, by educating them internally through, on your CSR is a way to build those connect, connections. And I would even add it's even more so important for remote employees. So many companies today have employees, including us, I think what of our 80% of our workforce isn't in our office, no 60% of our workforce isn't in our office. Um, so 
this is even more so, so that they feel connected. And even if you're communicating something that isn't happening at your location, it's at other locations, it still provides that sense of pride for employees. And um, areas of opportunity is to tie the messaging back to the CSR strategy. Always connect, connect those dots about why we're doing things so it doesn't look like you're doing something over here in this community or you've invested in this project or you're taking these environmental steps. Make sure it's all connected to those key components of your strategy, which is in episode five, we talk about how to do that. So Barbara, what I hear you saying and what we've talked about over the last few minutes is we've talked about audiences, what to communicate, why to communicate, ways to communicate, the words of caution and areas of opportunity. But as we're going through here talking about this, and I know that people are like, oh, those are such great ideas. But all of these ideas involved a bunch of different departments in your company. They involve Mm -hmm. IT, they involve HR, they involve um, all kinds of different um, components of your organization. And so those are all amazing opportunities to build those better relationships um, and some strong relationships in areas that you may not have thought that you um, that, that were important to you, but but you, we can see that they're vitally important. We call them sustainability cousins. That's right. So we, we hope that this content is valuable for the CSR professional, including and as well as the everyday superhero, who people who we say are inside of a company who want to make a difference. These are ways that you can get your message out. Um, of course, we encourage you to go through your corporate communications or through whoever is leading communications for your company. Don't go rogue. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but, um, but we hope it's valuable for people who have formal responsibility for CSR, but also people in corporate communications to understand the value of that this, this is not a nice to have. This is a key component of a business, especially as it relates to employer attraction and retention. And so um, we encourage uh, all of the parties, including leaders who might want to tap into this resource to go to destinationbetter.com slash six to download these um, show notes. And um, and this will be a tool and a, and a guideline for you and your organization. We'll also have some more information on our social media channels. We're on Facebook. We have a Facebook group. We'd love to have some more folks in and we'll be communicating there and sharing some ideas and um, best practices. And we're on... Um, Instagram. Did you say that already? I didn't say LinkedIn, Instagram. LinkedIn, Facebook. We have a Facebook group. Um, which Barbara already said, but we also have a um, Destination Better has a Facebook page, and you can go take a look over there. And also on YouTube, if you're so inclined to to watch the episodes, and um, as well as some other educational materials on our um, YouTube page. So we thank you for tuning in. And um, this is, as Janet said, part one of a three-part series. Next episode is episode seven, where we'll talk about the importance of external communications and the six components, the same six components, but focusing on external communications. And the last one I'm really excited about because because Janet is such an expert, really nationally, in how um, CSR impacts the investor community and what they care about. And so she'll be doing a really deep dive on episode I eight. I am super excited. And when we talk about investors, for those of you who are listening, it's not just really large, huge companies like BlackRock and State Street and all those companies that have you know, that are making, um, you know, portfolios that that you have inside of like your own 401k, but it's also private investors. They're really interested in this and there's, they're, they're making um, some great changes. So we hope that you'll join us for those. That'll be episode eight. So thanks for joining us. We hope this is valuable and until next time. 